This is Module 5, Lesson 39. In this lesson, we'll be solving multiplicative comparison word problems involving fractions. And we're going to go right to our problem set in this lesson. So remember, we're using our RDW process to solve the problems. R, D, W, read, draw, and write. So we're going to read the problem first. We'll do number one together. Tamika ran two and five-eighths miles. Her sister ran twice as far. How far did Tamika's sister run? So let's go to the draw part now and do a tape diagram. So first we're going to show Tamika. And she ran two and five-eighths miles. Her sister ran as far as Tamika did, and then that much again. And our unknown is how much did her sister run. So that shows our problem with the draw step. Then we're going to write an equation to solve the problem. So we have how far Tamika ran times 2, since it's twice as many. So we'll use our distributive property to distribute the two first over the whole number, and then over the fractional part. And we'll end up with 4 plus 10 eighths, and 10 eighths be equal to 1 and 2 eighths. So when we add those together, we get 5 and 2 eighths. So our answer would be, again, writing it in a complete sentence, Tamika's sister ran five and two eighths, and don't forget to write in the units miles. You could also simplify five and two eighths to five and one fourth, so if that was the answer you came up with, that's also correct. Okay, read number two and try that one on your own. Okay, so again, we have a comparison. We have Natasha's sculpture. <clears throat> and her sculpture was five and three eighths inches tall. I mean three sixteenths, I'm sorry, inches tall. Maya's was four times as tall. So we take Natasha's and we're going to do it four times since it was four times as tall. And the question is, how much shorter was Natasha's sculpture than Maya's? So we're not looking for the total height of Maya's sculpture. We're looking for this difference between the height of Maya's and the height of Natasha's. Now, you could take a couple of different strategies here. One is you could add up how tall Maya's sculpture was and then subtract Natasha's to get the difference. You could also realize that this section here is the difference, and this is three times as tall as Natasha's. These two balance each other out, and then the difference would be three times. So let's write our equation that way. So three times five and three sixteenths. And again, using our distributive property, We have 3 times 5 plus 3 times 3 si uh, 3 6 3 sixteenths would equal 15 plus 9 sixteenths or 15 and 9 sixteenths. 
So our solution would be Maya's sculpture is 15 and 9 16 inches taller than Natasha's. And again, if you decided to do this in two steps and first figure out the height of Maya's sculpture and then subtract Natasha's sculpture from Maya's sculpture, that's an equally reasonable way to solve this problem. But either way, this would be your answer. Okay, we try number three. Okay, let's draw this as our tape diagram. So the seamstress needs one and five eighths yards to make a child's dress. So for the child's, she needs one and five eighths yards of fabric. She needs three times as much fabric to make a woman's dress. So she needs this amount one and five eighths three times. And the question is, how many yards of fabric does she need for both dresses? So again, there's more than one way to solve this. We could see that we could figure out how much for the woman's dress and then how much for the child's dress and add them together. We could also realize that it's the same amount, one and five eighths yards, one, two, three, four times. So to add the three times for the woman's dress plus the four times for the child's dress, we could do this in one step of we need four times one and five eighths yards. So using distributed property, four times one for the whole number, and then four times five eighths, we'd get four and 20 eighths. And in 20 eighths, that would be two and four eighths. So when we add them together, we get six and four eighths, which is equivalent to six and a half yards. <clears throat> so to answer the question for both dresses, the seamstress would need four and six, six and four eighths or six and one half yards of fabric. Okay, let's go on to number four. <clears throat> Piece of blue, blue yarn is five and two thirds yards long. We start there, finish reading and drawing your picture with a tape diagram and write the equation that you need to solve the problem. Okay, so again, we're gonna start out with our tape diagram. So a blue piece of yarn is five and two thirds yards long. The pink yarn is five times as long as the blue. Okay, and 
Bailey tied them together with a knot that used a third of a yard from each piece of yarn. So we're going to take out a third of a yard here and we're going to take out a third of a yard here. Okay, so if we look at that then we'll see now the piece of blue would be five, five and one third yards. And if we figure the pink, let's take five times five and two thirds using distributed property, five times five plus five times two thirds would be 25 plus 10 thirds and 10 thirds would be three and one third. That would give us 27, 28 and one third. But we're subtracting out one third. So if we have 28 and one third, we take this away. <clears throat> we only have 28 yards left. So we'd have five and one third yards of the blue plus 28 yards of the pink. So we would end up with 33 and one third yard of the two of them tied together. So to write our answer in a complete sentence, the total length tied together is three thirty three and one third yards. Now again there was more than one way to solve this problem. You could have seen that we had two pieces that were five and one third, the blue piece and the last piece of the pink. So you could have done two times five and one third and then saw that we had four pieces that were five and two thirds. You could have solved it that way and figured this sum out and then added them together. That's another strategy that would also work to give you the same answer of 33 and one third yards. Try number five. Okay, so a truck driver drove 35 and 2 tenths miles before breakfast. So we'll draw that part. Then he drove 5 times as far before lunch. So he drew five times this. And the question is, how far did he drive before his lunch break? So we would add together what he drove before breakfast and then what he did before lunch, between breakfast and lunch. And we see looking at our tape diagram that he drove the distance of 35 and 3 tenths, 2 tenths, 6 times. So for our equation, 6 times 35 and 2 tenths using distributive property. <clears throat> and if you need to, it's fine to write a little multiplication problem on the side. So we'd start with six times 35 plus six times the fractional part of two tenths. So six times 35, five times six is 30, three times six is 18 plus three is 21. 
one, so we have 210 for the whole number part. And then we have 12 tenths, which written as a mixed number would be one and two tenths. So when we add them together, we get 211 and two tenths, which also can be simplified to one fifth. So to write our answer in a complete sentence, he drove Two hundred eleven and one fifth miles before his lunch break. Okay, and then let's try number six. All right, so we have Mr. Washington's motorcycle, which takes five and five tenths gallons of gas to fill the tank. Then his van needs five times as much gas. <coughs> So we have five and five tenths, five times, to represent what the van uses. And then our question is, if he pays $3 per gallon for gas, how much will it cost him to fill both the van and the motorcycle? So first we need to find out how much total gallons he needs to fill both of his vehicles. So we could figure out how much the van is and then add the motorcycle, or we could also see that it's five and five tenths gallons six times. So we could do it either way. Using distributed property, we have six times five plus six times five tenths. That would give us 30 plus 30 tenths, which would be equal to three. So for the first part of what we need, he's going to need 33 gallons of gas. And then if we know it's going to cost him $3 per gallon for gas, so 33 gallons times $3 a gallon, it would cost him $99. So to answer the question, it will cost him $99 to fill both vehicles. And that's the end of lesson 39.